I love the Total War series. Shut up, Room 2, you didn't happen! I loved the Total War series, up to and including Shogun 2, which I spent a fair bit of this week playing. With it I reenacted every Helm's Deep, Minas Tirith and vengeful convoy ambush that I could have wanted. I really tore Japan up. I massacred armies, bribed settlements and pillaged to my heart's content. And before long, I had done it. I had complete domination over the entire island. Now I guess that this is the point where most people close the game down and move on to something else. But I don't know. That just felt wrong to me. Here I have been, waging wars for decades, only to leave once I could finally have my way? No. No, after all that that had happened, I owed it to this country to make it better. In my mind, the end had to justify the means. It was the only way to redeem myself. Kind King Philip was going to make Japan a utopia for every citizen, with low taxes, high standards of living and as many tentacles as they could eat. So I got to work. It was a shame to disband so many high-ranked armies and fleets, but doing so saved me lots of money, which let me lower taxes to the absolute minimum. I maxed out the tech tree and made each city a technological and cultural wonder. And for the first time ever, early modern Japan was united in peace and harmony. Oh, if only the game stretched beyond Japan. I could have changed the whole world. How different history would have been. But as it was, I was stuck on this island. Never mind. I began to spam the end turn button and the years of peace and prosperity began to rack up. And with it, patterns began to emerge. Pirate ships would attack the exact same trade route every 10 turns or so. I'd then blast them with my big black ship, only for them to continue to make the same mistake generation after generation. Some would be braver than others, some of them would stand and fight, whilst others would more annoyingly sail off and hide somewhere. Those were the worst and wasted far too much of my time. Eventually, I grew tired of this inconvenience and just let them pillage my trade route. Problem solved? Nope. A few turns later, they disappeared. I thought they had grown bored and sailed on their way, but it turned out that instead they were targeting my trade ships themselves, which was super bad news for me since it meant that I had to attack them to stop them from becoming a more serious nuisance. Another pattern I noticed? Well, let's just say you should never visit the province of Buzen. Buzen? Buzen. It was the only place to suffer from droughts, typhoons, disease and earthquakes. Boozen's inhabitants really did incur God's wrath over the decades. It's funny how, once war's out of the way, everything else becomes super easy. I quickly ran out of things to improve, so I tried levelling up my agents to make them the best the Empire has ever seen. I had pretty geishas who had come of service at the beautiful young age of 19. I always felt that those units lost their youthful appeal by their late 20s, but then I remember that I'm that age, so the youthful cutoff has been shifted to 30. For now. But in this new era, free of war and famine, nothing stopped them from living out long and prosperous lives. One of mine lived well into her 60s, still seducing and charming up until the very end. Decades of peace may have been great for the people, but it was rather boring for me. From this tedium, I developed a fascination for old people. I hate to pick favourites, but I did force the geisha to waddle halfway across Japan just to have a good view of me destroying the pirate ships. But I grew tired of wooing her and soon, incredible Emperor Philip, drunk with power, demanded more of an audience. So I found the oldest monk and governor to join her on the beach. The journey must have finished off the 75 year old monk since he never arrived, but the geisha and governor eventually got to stand together to watch pirate ships get pounded by the big black ship. Come to think of it, they didn't have the best of views, but it'll do. Here, check out the governor's 80th birthday. Yeah, getting old sucks. It soon became apparent that these people, unlike all important immortal Philip, were but temporary pieces in a perpetual circle of life. Why should I waste time on these mere mortals when they would only drop dead within 50 clicks of Philip or so? I gave up with futile agent nurturing and resumed the clicking. Pirates continued to attack, Buzen continued to get every plague possible, and countless individuals lived a life of bliss and luxury under the rule of Time Lord and Saviour, Philip. With all opposition defeated, the game's limitations became all too apparent. The game still wanted me to defeat enemies and to assassinate leaders, even when there were none left standing. I started trying to break the game in silly ways, like to have so much money that it couldn't be displayed on screen. Here it is. Oh, the text just gets smaller. But I'm not one to take defeat so easily and crossing the 100 million gold line finally defeated the game's HUD. Ha! Take that Shogun 2. You suck. Creative Assembly, please fix. 
In 1710, a rebel army decided to attack a seemingly happy and peaceful province. Yep, of course it was Buzen. They took control with ease against my ill-prepared, peace-loving utopia of a city. I tried bribing them back to my side, but they just shot the messenger. So I decided that it would be more fun just to keep them. You know, like a pet. They can keep all the natural disasters for themselves. Though that didn't happen. The game chose South Shinano to become the new Buzen and suddenly started getting plagues, diseases and typhoons instead. Turns out that these aren't random acts of God, but very obvious disasters that target me rather than the NPCs. Thanks Shogun 2. I started a toy with Buzen. I witnessed some of the shittest ninjas the world has ever seen. They failed to sabotage anything, round after round, before eventually being caught and killed by the rebels. I later sent in a high level guy. He destroyed everything, then escaped unnoticed to retire next to my oldest geisha by the sea. She outlived him as well. It was around this point that the pirates started targeting a different trade route, which they stuck with for the rest of the game. It was much better place for the geisha to see and for me to defend within a single turn, so it was kind of a win-win for me. Eventually, in the year 1800, I grew tired of my pet. Poor Boozen had been neglected for a century. They hadn't even repaired the castle, so I just walked right in and reclaimed it. Now, I admit a video about peace within a total war game is boring, so here's some awesome footage from my attack on Boozen to help make it better. My army only comprised of archers, which aren't exactly the ideal unit for this kind of assault. Plus, the rebels made full use of my explodey siege tech, which also made things a bit more interesting. However, they were outnumbered and outclassed, and I soon won the battle, reclaimed Buzen, and reunited Japan once more. And Buzen quickly became the disaster capital of the world again. But with it began the great era of peace. Like, kind of what you'd expect after the end of The Lord of the Rings or something. 200 years went by without a single death from war, apart from those damn rebel pirates who would troll me every three years or so. I could finally say that all those war atrocities had been worth it, as now many generations had lived in peace and tranquility within a fully united Japan. There may have been no internet, cars or computers, but my united Japan must have been the envy of the modern world, plus it had most definitely studied the blade. But everything has to end, and in summer of 2017, God Philip raised the tax rates to maximum. You know, just to see what would happen. Would they show loyalty to the one leader who had brought peace to Japan? Nope. Many provinces turned on me. By 2018, almost all of the old clans had returned. Their large armies took many of my provinces. This disrupted my food supply, causing a chain reaction across my remaining provinces as everybody began to starve. Even those loyal to me soon found themselves surrounded and unable to defend themselves. By 2020, I was no more. Only two things in life are certain, and for me, one quickly led to the other. And with it, Japan had been thrown back to square one. So, in conclusion, there is never a happy ever after. You can only ever delay the game over. Even the greatest of achievements, when viewed on a long enough timeline, become nothing. Your efforts are pointless. There's no use in doing anything. You suck. Game over.